In this video, we're going to break down the process of using inspiration from other films to help light your film. We use the same process to light our short film, The Asylum Groove, and if you haven't seen it, you can find it here. Welcome to the Filmlog. Rocket Stock's Lightly Pack Illuminate is a sure way to impress your viewers. Shot using digital cinema cameras in 4K, it's an unbeatable way to lift your video to new cinematic heights. Just head over to rocketstock.com or click the link in the description below. First of all, you want to look for inspiration. Our short film is set loosely in the 70s and in an asylum, so a film that we took a lot of inspiration from was One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. You can see this in the costume our main character is wearing. We have a video about the costume right here if you want to check it out. You can create a mood board of images which have a similar look to the film you want to make. We took inspiration from films and other pieces of art we found online. This image of Gene Kelly in Thousands Cheer from 1943 inspired this shot. And this image inspired us to create the final shot in the film. <laughs> Example images allow you to focus your attention and dial in the look of the film. So you can start to work on how you want to light it, design the costumes and how you would like your location to look. Now you have this inspiration, you can start to make creative choices to make those images your own. The location we had for our film was an old assembly hall which had large windows that let in a lot of natural light. This laid down the groundwork of how we were going to light the film, as we wanted to embrace as much of the natural light coming into the room as possible. It's not always possible, but if you can get into the location before the shoot and do some camera tests, it will allow you to work out how you're going to light your film. One of the main creative choices we made was to shoot the film at F8. This is because we wanted to show the detail of the location, as it was already old and grimy which suited the look of the film. This was another decision we made after looking at the reference images from films like A Thousand's Cheer and One Flew of the Cougar's Nest, both which had a deep focus. Shooting that F8 also helped to prevent blowing out the window light, which again allows the audience to see the old and grimy look of the location. One problem we did have shooting that F8 was that our subject was now underexposed, so we did a camera test. We placed the subject in the middle of the room with the window behind them on a bright sunny day, which was going to be the harshest lighting conditions we would encounter on the shooting day. By using a light meter, it told us if we wanted to expose for the outside correctly, we would have to shoot at an f-stop of f16, and if we wanted to expose our subject correctly, we would have to shoot at an f-stop of 5.6. This was a 3 stop difference, or a ratio to 8 to 1. To get a little bit more dynamic range, we decided to shoot in Cine 4, which gave us a little bit more information when working in post. With all of this information, we worked out that all of the lights that we currently own would not be reliable or bright enough to light this scene. We rented 3 Aperture 300Ds. These lights are rated at the equivalent of a 2K light and are set to 5500 Kelvin. One of the most versatile aspects of these lights is the bones mount attachment which is on the front of the light. The light comes with a reflector cone, but we also attached a Fennel which we used for this shot. The main attachment we used was a space light which essentially works the same as a china lantern. We put the lights high up on stands and angled them down so the space light could hang down and spread the light evenly. We positioned the lights in front of the windows so the light would be coming from the same direction the daylight was. Now the light was evenly spread, it brought up the exposure in the room and created enough light so our subject was correctly exposed. Everything at this point was very even, so to add a little contrast, the space lights come with flags which can be clipped onto the space light. We use them to block the light from hitting the background, therefore creating a contrast between our subject and background which makes him pop on screen. Throughout the shoot we even move the lights closer to our actor or dim them down to get the correct exposure. The lights come with a remote which allows you to control each light from one remote, meaning you can dim and turn them off wirelessly. The lighting setup we used for this film was super versatile. We could move the lights wherever we needed and they give off a lot of soft light. Being so flexible allowed each setup to be set up quickly and save time on set, which was important as we shot this film in a day and a half. Taking inspiration from other films and artwork really inspired us when lighting this film and it can do the same thing for you. Find images that closely represent how you would like your film to look and use them to drive your creativity to create new images. Let us know in the comments below if you see anything in the behind the scenes footage that you would like to know more about. Also, next week we're going to be talking about how we shot these two shots from the film. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing by hitting the orange lens cap. If you want to help this channel grow, give us a thumbs up or down if you don't. And remember, achieve it one shot at a time.